All right, this is a story how I got Aquila. And so uh, the, the deal I made with myself was uh, I was gonna get a, a real job, a regular job, not any of the kind of uh, uh, temp work or uh, independent contracting work that I've been doing for years. Um, and try to get a little stability. So I got uh, I got a really good job. Uh, I built the tiny house, and uh, next stop was the Humane Society. And on their website, I saw they had a German Shepherd puppy. Maybe it was like three or four um, for sale, and I was going to go get him. Um, and when I got there, it turned out the people who got the German Shepherd, like I was like I showed up like like five minutes or ten minutes after they opened and it turns out the couple that got the German Shepherd puppy were waiting there before the doors opened so so yeah I was like well let's see what else they have and there weren't any other German Shepherds there and uh, I walked through this doggy maze and Aquila was the very last cubicle in the doggy maze and uh, he was also the only quiet dog in the entire uh, building and uh, he was like tilting his head at me and all curious and uh, I just kept walking you know I was like well I was looking for a German Shepherd I'll come back later and I thought you know why am I all hooked up on the idea of a German Shepherd like maybe I should think more about uh, intelligence and behavior than I should about uh, the species. Hey Kila! Kila! This way bud! Go get some water. Look at him, he's gonna, look at that on his side, he rolled in something, jerk. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm gonna go back through and just kind of look for intelligent dogs. But here's the problem, is uh, when you're at the Humane Society, all the trainers, as they walk by the cages, they hand out treats to every dog. Um, and so when a person walks by, if a dog's been there at any period of time, uh, they go ape every time a person walks by. So basically all I got from every single dog was super high energy um, and demands because I didn't have any treats. Except for Aquila. He, was the only, he, he had just arrived. He hadn't even been operated on yet. They, they'd snip him. So he's the only dog that hadn't been taught to go ballistic every time a person walked up. And he was still like looking, you know, tilting his head sideways, which is just cute. I love that. And so I like, I asked the people, I'm like, I'd like to meet and greet with this dog. They didn't have any paperwork on him. I think it said, I think the, the thing on his cell said it was empty actually, that, he, that, that there was no dog there. And I'm like, I assure you, there is a dog there. And so this uh, trainer brought Akila in for the meet and greet. And uh, Akila walks in the room, looks around drops into this low crouch, hair on his back and his butt shoots straight up and he's pointing, he's looking straight at a garden gnome. He's terrified of this garden gnome. I'm well, not actually terrified, deeply concerned because he doesn't retreat. Uh, he slowly starts working his way closer and closer to this garden gnome, uh, kind of angling side to side uh, and finally gets close enough to smell it and it totally smells like dog pee. Then he pees on it and runs away. Like, but happily, he's not like running away because like, I peed on you and now I'm scared. He's like, I figured out what it was and now I'm done. And then uh, the next thing he did was uh, notice that there was a window in the wall that looked out at uh, the other dogs. And he stood straight up on his hind legs and looked out the window. He didn't put his paws against the, his front paws against the wall or anything like that. He just kind of stood up like a groundhog. And looked at all, and looked at every single dog out there, and uh, that was really cool. Um, and then he came over and checked me out, and just kind of briefly, just kind of sniffed me, checked my hands to see if they smelled like treats, uh, looked around at all the toys, and then went over to the trainer, plopped his butt down, and lifted his paw up. And he's like, "Give me the treats." And so the trainer gave him some treats and I got to see how the command is to sit and shake that he knew, which was to ho hold up a, a hand like this, like to an outer paw. And that was it, like the trainer actually was really embarrassed because uh, Akila just didn't want anything other than treats at this point. He's like, I'm hungry, I'll give me treats. So like the trainer's like, well, you know, uh, I'll try to get him to play with you. I'm like, no, no, don't try to get him to do anything. 
Just leave him alone, man. Give him some treats if you got some treats. Um, and so I, I told them after a while, I'm like, all right, I'll take this dog. Like, I, I don't think we sat there for more than like seven minutes. So like, it was a very brief period of time. And he was really surprised. And I think he was expecting like people to go like, oh, me and this dog had this instant connection. When really, Akilah does like sniff me a couple of times, made sure I didn't have any treats and ignored me. Um, but I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking for some sort of instant emotional bond. Uh, I was looking for a display of uh, intelligence and curiosity. Um, and uh, coping skills. I was really impressed with the fact that he was totally scared of that garden gnome, um, but was going to, you know, figure it out. He wasn't going to, like, just go to the farthest corner of the room and hide from it. Yeah, so then I brought Akilah home. And uh, the one thing I remember about the first three days, I took three days off of work. We'd come out here and spend the entire day out here, and he'd just run constantly. And the third day, I said, are you ready to go to the Delta? And he jumped straight up into the air. And I realized, uh, back then, I didn't talk that much. And so it'd been, it'd been a couple days before, uh, before he heard my voice. And uh, it surprised him that I spoke. <laughs> um, what else? Oh, he, he was really frustrating when I first got him because he was skin and bone like you could see his spine. And he was starving. Like, I fed him constantly. And then he'd come out here and run like crazy. And he'd dig up mice and moles and eat them. And uh, he was just like full speed all the time. And he didn't really acknowledge me. Like, it was a really, really long time before uh, Keela acknowledged me. And I remember, like, we got here. He, take, he took off like normal. And uh, he started to take off, and then he stopped and turned around, and he came back up, and he was just kind of looking at me like, he's like, hey, you know, who are you anyway? Who are you that keeps taking me to this great place every single day? It was really rewarding, because up, up until this time, uh, I really was conscious of the fact that uh, my dog really didn't have a lot of uh, response to me. And I thought that part of my mind was maybe it was part of the tiny house. Like when we, when we get home, you know, his his room, he has a, his room is the same size as my bedroom. My bedroom's above his room. So when we get home, he goes into his bedroom and I go into mine, and we're separated. So there isn't there isn't any of that sitting uh, on the couch, uh, head in the lap, watching TV together, that kind of thing happening. So, but eventually, he just realized, hey. You're cool. Oh, yeah. And then uh, I, I, taught, I taught him how to eat berries. He's out here eating mice and moles all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I got I to gotta show you how to eat berries, buddy. So I showed him how to pick berries, and he loved that. All right, that's, that's basically the story, how I got Aquila.